Hey everybody, I'm Chef Rocco Despirito, and you're listening to Cook Tracks. Hey everybody, I'm Rach, Rachel Ray, and you're listening to Cook Tracks. It's a brand new, super cool way to cook. Each episode will be right alongside you. Well, kind of, we'll be in your ear, taking you step by step through a dish or a meal in real time. We'll be adding a little pinch of tips, tricks, and fun stories to keep you guys entertained and up your cooking game. Needless to say, we've got your back in the kitchen. I mean it, guys. You literally don't have to worry about a thing. I'm going to keep you on track with my buddy, Cappy. Think of him as our kind of play-by-play announcer for the cook-along. And since not all stoves are created equal, boy, do I know that. If you guys get a little caught up, just hit pause. You don't have to read a recipe, and it isn't rocket science. This is not something you're supposed to take seriously. We want you guys to have fun. Follow along, and at the end of each episode, we'll have made a dish or a meal from start to finish together. Gather up your ingredients, pour yourself a drink or a cup of tea, and turn your volume up to 11. This is Cook Tracks. For this episode, we have one of my dear old friends, one of New York City's most important chefs, Rocco Despirito. He's currently the chef at the Standard Grill, and nothing standard about it. It's super cool, you know, in New York City. And all food lovers are super psyched that he is back in a restaurant kitchen. I absolutely love him. He is super talented, and he's genuinely a genuine man who's a great friend. Rocco is going to school you guys on risotto. After this episode, you have no excuse for not knowing how to make a super creamy, perfect, every time risotto. The key? Stir, stir, stir. Let's talk prep work. You can keep on listening to this episode, but if you go to your episode notes on your device or cooktracks.com, you'll find the ingredients and equipment list that you need to cook along with us. All right, Cap's in the kitchen with my buddy Rocco. Take it away, boys. All right, everyone, we're here in the kitchen with Rocco Despirito. Yeah, we are. Yes, we are. Damn <laughs> right. The, the Standard Grill restaurant in New York City. Uh-huh. This is a real That's working right. kitchen. There's whole you hogs being it. butchered. <laughs> <laughs> he's, so. he's not kidding. There are two whole 100-pound hogs being butchered right in front of him. We're going to get into that. I'm curious. Yeah. Tell us what we're making first. My friend, we're making risotto, which is a very common Italian rice dish. But it's not just a dish. It's an expression of love, in my opinion. I love it. When you make risotto for someone, you're telling them that they mean something to you, that you care about them, that you're willing to go through the pain and torture of making risotto and, and, and potentially the disappointment of overcooking it which is really tough for a chef to, to take all those risks yeah. to show them that you, you care about them. The good news about this is that you're going to cook along with Rocco and know exactly how to make the best risotto. So let's do a roll call of ingredients. Yeah. Take us through what everyone should have in front of them. Okay, so this is going to be a basic risotto plus truffle. So basic risotto is butter, thyme, onions, garlic, olive oil, aborio rice, white wine, chicken stock, parmigiano-reggiano, and more butter. Now, we're going to make truffle risotto, so we're adding truffle pieces, fresh truffle slices, and truffle butter. And we could talk about truffle, and yes. everything's kind of like readily available these days. Yeah, or- so the truffle butter is, is absolutely everywhere now. I've, I see it in every uh, supermarket uh, from the very low end to the very high end. And if, if not, it's available online. The great thing about risotto is that most guys don't eat truffle risotto every day. They yeah. eat regular risotto with just butter and parm. Yeah. And you guys know how great butter and parm on anything is. So. so if you want to just make the butter parm version, it's great. I also like to finish it with some chopped herbs. And it's a mixture of chives, parsley, tarragon, and chervil. Perfect. So... Tell us what pot we're using, and also heads up to everybody, your chicken stock should be warm on your burner as well. Always work with warm chicken stock, right? I I like to work with room temp or warm chicken stock, definitely not cold. It will work if it's cold. It's not, not to say that it won't work, but it's a little bit better. The results are better if the stock is around the same temperature as what you're cooking. Got it. So that there isn't this jarring moment when the warm rice and the cold stock collide and then have to figure out which temperature is going to be the dominant temperature. Um, the, the good thing, uh, the thing about risotto is you have to keep the temperature and the simmering very stable and very constant in order to cook the rice properly. So if you're adding cold stock to a hot simmering rice liquid, you're going to slow it down. Got it. And you, what you'll end up with is um, overcooked on the outside rice and undercooked on the inside or some combination of that. So cooking is science, but uh, we have your back. 
cooking is definitely science. Uh, with risotto, it's especially difficult because there are two kinds of starch. The outer starch is softer than the inner starch. So there's a kernel of very hard starch in the middle of risotto rice, and then there's the uh, outer part of it is very soft. And the idea is to cook them both evenly, but how do you do that if they're by nature different? And you do that with a very constant, careful simmer. Got it. All right, yeah. let's do this. All right, cool. So we're going to start with butter. So uh, this is whole pot. butter. I use uh, whole organic butter. And not, don't be shy with the butter. I'm gonna, we're going to make risotto for four people, and I'm going to start with, you want to go by sticks? Uh, sure. Quarter stick, sticks. Quarter stick. Quarter yeah. stick of butter. Three tablespoons of butter. And we're also going to add... That pot over, overheat, is that like medium, medium high heat? So, yeah, it? notice I don't have the pan right over the direct flame because I'm very concerned about it getting too hot. Anytime rice in risotto making gets too hot, you're, you're likely to either overcook or undercook it and not get it right. Got you want to control the temperature always. If you're working at home, you want to start off with low heat. So put your flame on low. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Low heat. Yeah. And I'm not getting the butter. The butter is melting slowly. It's not sizzling. And I'm going to add about equal amounts, three tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. Now, it looks like a lot of fat, and it is a lot of fat. There should be a lot of fat. The fat is what's going to um, allow the flavors to mingle and to... It, it'll not only bring out the flavors in the onions and garlic and aromats, but it'll allow the flavors to travel through the rice. Got it. And that olive oil is like the, the, the green good stuff. Yeah, you want that green, very herbaceous, the expensive stuff. This is a good place to use the expensive stuff. Awesome. We're going to add to it. Now, risotto, you can't rush it. It's uh, something you have to have a lot of patience for. Again, that, that's why I say it's a labor of love. Yeah. You, you have to be patient. You have to let it do its thing. Every time you make risotto, even if you're using the same exact rice, same exact stock, it's going to do something different. It, do, it happens to us every day in this kitchen. We all make risotto. We fight over who makes it, actually. Yeah, really? We all love to make it. And it's a little different every time. So you have to be aware and understand it's a dynamic process, right? Yeah. Yeah. At the end, you want a fully cooked, tender grain of rice that isn't overcooked, that tastes delicious, that's sitting in this creamy, unctuous liquid that you've made. That's the goal. How you get there sometimes requires different routes. Yeah. Risotto can be very uh, temperamental. I feel like I know chefs who like won't serve it because if it like sits in the window for an extra 10 seconds, like it changes. No, no. A lot of, a lot of restaurants don't put it on the menu because it's very tricky to make and very difficult to serve in, in volume. So you're right. A lot of chefs... So I'm putting in about a full teaspoon of garlic. And I'm going to put in what looks like about a half cup of diced onion. Diced regular onion. Any kind of onion is fine. Yellow, Spanish, white, even red would work fine. And I don't want to brown either one of these. I just want to sweat them. Sweat them is cooking with no color. And you want to do that to soften them, to extract flavor from them. Um, if you make it brown at this point, you, you could turn the risotto brown. And the risotto will look like it's been cooked in a burnt stock or a burnt liquid, and you don't want Got that. Got it. So as opposed to, like, sautéing or caramelizing an onion where you... Yeah. It's, like, opposite of yeah, that. Yeah, this is not the place you to, want no to color. sauté with color. Yeah, sautéing without color is generally called sweating. And probably, if it, like, starts to turn color, your heat may be a little too hot. That's a really good rule of thumb, yeah. So if your onions or garlic are, are caramelizing, you should turn down the heat. Yeah. You should also pick out the little burnt parts. I've done that more than a few times yeah. in my life, where some of it gets away from me and I, I pull it out because I don't want it to end up in the sauce that we cook the risotto in. This smells... I'm going to add some thyme to this. This is loose thyme that I'm just adding to the fat. And this thyme will be pulled out later but it will definitely stay in and flavor the fat that will flavor the rice. Perfect. So whole sprigs of thyme. We're not picking yeah. it off, chopping it. Don't have to do any of that. Exactly. Yeah. Don't forget, everybody, we're in a real working kitchen here. So dinner service tonight. Got cases of mushrooms being prepped and whole hogs being butchered. Are those hogs for... Uh... They came from North Carolina. Whole city hogs. Wow. They just brought them up. They're uh, milk-fed... I think they're Mangalitsa. I'm not sure. I think they were supposed to be Mangalitsa. Awesome. It smells delicious. Butter and oil in the pan, onions and garlic and fresh thyme, kind of low heat simmering out, sweating those onions, stirring it every now and then, getting that cooking going. So uh, when you cook risotto, you're basically chained to the stove and to your pan for the entire cooking time. It's very hard to leave it alone. 
if you do leave it alone, something will probably burn or overcook. I, I walked away to grab my coffee for 30 seconds. That's about all you can leave it. Hence the labor of love. Yeah. Now I'm going to add rice. The onions and garlic are cooked through. That what I would say, they're perfectly sweated. They're cooked through. They're not colored. They're soft, but not caramelized. That's, very, again, very important. I'm going to add um, a half a box rice. A box rice is a kilo. So that onion-garlic mixture has been cooking so it's about for about a pound. three, four minutes. But listen, as we say every episode, everyone's stove is different. So cook by sight, smell. Yeah, for sure. Cook by sight, smell. Use your five senses. The time and temperature thing works as a baseline. But you're right, every stove, every city is a different temperature, yeah. and things will move at a different pace. There's no question about that. But, you know, time and temp is a great way to get started, right? It's a good base yeah. level to cook from. So I'm adding about half a box, which is going to be about a pound. pound of arborio rice. There are a few kinds of risotto rice. Risotto is grown in the Po Valley in Italy. Arborio is the most commonly used. Carnaroli is another. Vialone nano is another. Is it uh, just personal them, preference? My personal preference is Vialone nano. It's hard to get it consistently, so I use Arborio most of the time uh, for professional use. But at home, I have a little stock of my own aged uh, Vialone nano. Now, the difference between them is um, length of the grain, how much starch is in them, how the farmers tr- drain their fields, that kind of thing. Uh, Vialone nano is generally considered uh, the most chef-friendly rice. It's the one that has the least ability to overcook or least likely to overcook. It's a little more forgiving. Yeah. It's like when you buy um, pasta made from semolina. It's a little more forgiving. It doesn't overcook as quickly as a regular white flour pasta. Got it. So very important step is to toast the rice. Now, when I say toast, you're thinking probably, you know, toasted bread, get it brown. That's not what I mean. What I mean is to harder, harden the outer shell of starch. The starch that I told you was softer than the inner starch. When you look at a grain of rice, you can see the inside has a very dark white appearance and the outside has a translucent white appearance. That's because the outside is softer than the inside. So what I'm trying to do is make the outside as hard as the inside by toasting it in the fat that we just cooked the onions and thyme in. So giving that pan a little shake, giving the, giving the arborio rice a little shake to coat all those grains. Mm-hmm. You want every grain of rice coated in the aromatized fat. You want it to have contact with the thyme Uh, You want the butter and oil to envelop each grain, allowing you to flavor it and to toast it evenly. The fat is going to help us do two things evenly, uh, transport flavor and cook whatever we're cooking evenly. If some part of this is touching fat and another isn't, that part will cook faster or it'll cook unevenly if they're not all touching the same amount of fat. More or less consistently giving that pan a shake. Yep, a... lots of stirring, lots of stirring. Um, you can use this rubber spat, you can use a wooden spoon, a stainless steel spoon. People talk about all kinds of things with, when it comes to risotto. Um, wooden spoon is probably the most commonly used thing. St- uh, rubber spat and wooden spoon together are probably ideal because you can scrape down the side of your pan. You want to scrape down the side of your pan so that uh, nothing gets burnt and then later falls into the rice. So as a home cook, you may have heard of like a risotto pan, which basically has rounded, a rounded bottom where the rice doesn't get caught, but it's not fully necessary. I think just make sure you get, as you said, make sure you get the corners of the yeah, pot. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. A risotto pan is, is basically a saucepan, yeah. a, a, a wide bottom saucepan. Yeah. You want a, a large bottom and straight sides or at least slope sides. You don't want a saute pan that has no sides. That will allow the water or the stock to evaporate too quickly. Yeah, so there's two things happening. There's water evaporating. When I say water, I'm talking about either white wine or chicken stock. Those are evaporating and also being absorbed by the rice. And those two things have to happen at a very consistent pace. All right, so now it's time to season. Like, you're kind of giving it, like, a semi-vigorous stir. Is that on purpose? Yeah, you want to be, you know, forceful with it at this point. This is an important time to season it with salt and pepper. Let me just find my salt and pepper. All my salt is gone. All right, so I've got fine sea salt, and I'm adding a, what I think is a pretty generous amount to the rice. And I'm seasoning the rice directly before I add any liquid. My stock is a very light stock that I, um, that I make with a large amount of water and a small amount of bones. I don't want a very heavy stock for this risotto. I want the truffle flavor to be the star. So this has been going for, I don't know, call it three, four minutes, but again, adjust to your to your stove and it's seasoned and as- And I'm tasting the fat. Tasting the fat. It's important that you taste it to know, did I put enough salt? 
Can I taste the onions? Can I taste the garlic? Can I taste the thyme? And the answer is yes to all of that. So this is an important moment, deglazed with white wine. You can use um, lots of different spirits at this point. Uh, white wine is a very common one. It provides acidity, which will balance the risotto out in the end. Risotto is a very rich, unctuous dish made of mostly starch, fat, and cheese, right? The wine will help balance that. So I'm going to add a cup and a half. It's just enough to cover the rice. Cup and, and you can start to see wine. yeah, a cup and a half of a light white wine that's fairly high in acid. I think we use Petit Chablis here, which is, yeah, which is a high acid wine, white wine from France. And again, I think, Rocco, I'm going to reiterate this. Yeah. But you were like toasting those grains, but you're not looking for color. like a golden or brown color. No. You're, it's like a yeah. We say toasting, toast. we really should say hardening, hardening, hardening the exterior of the grains of rice just to give us a chance to cook them evenly. And you'll see that um, if the temperature is right, if you're, you're sauteing your rice, onions, garlic at the right temperature, when you add the white wine, even though the white wine was cold, it immediately simmered. You got actually a, si a slight saute sound. You got a little sizzle for a second. It immediately simmered and now is simmering at a sort of low to medium pace and the rice is already absorbing the liquid. That's what should happen if all the temperatures are, are the correct temperature at that point. And we're point. still working over like low heat? Uh, this is low to medium heat now. Got it. Cap. Yeah. And you can see that the white wine liquid is starting to thicken. Yeah. Now as we make this rice, we're going to do two things. We're going to ask the rice to absorb liquids that we put into the pot. We're also going to ask the rice to release its starch. Risotto is creamy, not because of cream. A lot of people think we add cream to risotto. We never add cream to risotto. It's creamy because we're beating the starch out of the rice into the liquid, while at the same time asking the rice to absorb the flavored starch. You know, it's funny. If anyone listened to the Rachel Ray episode, I asked her if there was like, I don't know how this question came about, but if there was like any, if you could create a, a food law, like what would that law be? And she had mentioned no cream and carbonara and also right. risotto. And I no mentioned how carbonara. you were making risotto. And she's like, I don't think Rocco's putting cream in his risotto. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> definitely not. Yeah, risotto, uh, cream and risotto is sort of cheating. Yeah. Now you can see that the rice has released some of its starch. The white wine liquid is creamy already. It's a thick, viscous liquid now. And when it's absorbed enough liquid so that you can see the bottom of the pan and it remains dry as you pull your spatula through, that's when it's time to add more liquid. And you want to just keep this pace up. And the amount of liquid you add really just depends on what the simmer time is. So if you're adding liquid and it takes 10 minutes for it to come back to a boil and simmer again, that's too much liquid or the liquid is too cold. But if you're adding liquid and it comes to a simmer right away like this has, that's a just the perfect amount. Okay, so you just added the first dose or the first batch of the liquid, not including the wine, but for everyone cooking along at home, this is the first of at least three or so additions of liquid Rocco is going to probably add. So as you cook at home, listen to his cues on when to add the liquid. You may need to add it a little before he does or a little after he does because not all stoves are created equal, but we'll definitely finish up around the same time. Risotto is all about timing, as Rocco said. So hang with us, listen to his cues. You've got this. So you see how you could you could never walk away, right? Yes. If you, you walk literally away, haven't walked away, something bad will happen. Right. Yeah. And you'll have to start over. And uh, of like course, Ro you don't Rocco want to start over sitting at the end here of this over the yeah. stove. And I'm having bad flashbacks of when I worked in a kitchen and I couldn't handle the. How bad heat. was it, Andrew? Yeah. How bad <laughs> was it? Tell me. When did you work in a kitchen? How bad was it? Oh God. Fifteen years ago. I said I'm going to switch to the pastry department where it's not so hot sitting over that grill. Pastry can get pretty hot. Was it, uh, let me guess, Gotham Bar and Grill? It was in, uh, it was in Chicago at Naha Restaurant. Yeah, which sadly recently closed. But Carrie Nahabidian does have another restaurant. So this, this rice will increase in size anywhere from three to five times. Again, depending on the kind of starch molecules that are in it, how dry it is, how, how long they dried it before they packaged it, how long it's been sitting in packaging. Usually when they package it and sous vide it, it doesn't dry anymore. Well, they claim it doesn't, but it, it can. And so most rule of thumb is uh, three times, but I've seen more than three. So if I just added all the liquid that I knew we would need to cook this rice at this point, you, you, might, you might ask, why, why wouldn't you just add all the liquid now? 
you, what you'd end up with is a, a rice soup. You would not allow the rice the time it needs to slowly absorb the stock. And what will happen is it'll boil, it, the outside will seal, and you'll have an undercooked inside and, and just basically rice floating around a lot of liquid. Still stirring. Folks. Still stirring. Still yep. stirring. Stirring, shaking. Keep over your stove, and it is worth it in the end. I think so. When people say, what do you like to cook? I like to cook uh, risotto because it's the thing people love to eat. Yeah. You know, everyone's, and everyone's top 10 risottos, you know, usually, you know, after pizza or before pizza at some point in there, right? Do you go by a ratio with liquid to rice? So the ratio, the rule of thumb ratio is three to one. I've seen as much as five to one. You want to have, you want to have three to four times what you're going to need available to you. Uh, when you're making risotto. So don't measure out your liquid and think, okay, the recipe calls for two quarts. All I need is two quarts. Much better we have six quarts. Hang in there on the stove because let's say, um, you know, someone's late or you do need to reheat it. You're going to need stock to do that. It does sit for a little while and becomes one, you know, solid mass. You're yeah. going to need stock to thin that out. Got it. You know, stock is your best friend when making risotto. How important is the stock, Ann? <laughs> Ann and I have had months and months of discussion about stock. We make it with bottled water. We, we simmer it at a very low temperature. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's the stock that we make risotto with is so important. You, you say it's just chicken stock. Specifically for risotto? Just for the stock? risotto, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Super light. We, uh, we tried using tap water, and it just wasn't coming out right, so we experimented with different things. We, we filtered it through charcoal, and then we ended up using bottled water, and it tasted This is incredible. Yeah. Wow. But um, you, when you're making this at home, you can use stock in a box. So a good time to taste the water. So the water's seasoned well. The, well. When I say the water, I'm talking about the liquid that the rice is cooking in. You always want to taste that. Put a spoon in there. Put your fingers in there. But you always want to verify that it tastes as seasoned as you think it's going to taste. Or, you, or you're expecting it to taste. And this is uh, really well seasoned right now. I taste thyme. I taste the garlic, the onion. I taste the light stock. I taste the salt that I added. And it's uh, simmering a little slower than I wanted to, so I'm not, I'm not going to touch it for a second. So you should see, like, uh, not a rolling boil for sure, but, like, little bubbles popping up. On light the bubbles popping up, yeah. I know there's, there's so much uh, language used to des describe what yeah. a light simmer, a rolling boil, a medium simmer looks like. Uh, hey, I have but, a question. Yeah. Rachel, I wonder if you know this. She couldn't find it anywhere. She once came across, she thinks it was in an old cookbook when she was doing her pasta dish for the series, the marriage of like pasta water or sauce and the pasta. She thought she came across a name in Italian. Yeah, it's called l'acqua di cottura. It's the cooking lump, the l'acqua di cottura. She's going to love yeah. you even more than she so does. It's literally the water of cooking. L'acqua, L and the word aqua. We need to write this down cottura means cooking. Um, so it's what every Italian mom, grandma uses to finish their sauce. She's like, I have tried yeah. looking this up and Googling. Yeah. I was like, have you asked people in Italy? She's like, it, fr she, it like frustrates her to no end. She'll like go back to her computer and try to Google it. And she can't come yeah, across it. Yeah, it's not easy it. to find, believe it or not. She's yeah. like, I wrote I've written it down, about it a few times, I don't but know where I wrote yeah. it down. So in keeping in theme with this uh, series, uh, is it, why are you obsessed with this dish? Or is it an ingredient? I guess it's one and the same almost with risotto. So risotto is one of those ingredients that's also a dish. Tomatoes yeah. are not, for example. Tomatoes are a great ingredient, but not, not a dish. When you think risotto rice, saborio rice, it's really only one, one thing you can do with it. You could also make balls and fry it. That's called arancini, but it all starts with the risotto, right? Um, and I'm obsessed with it because of the technical challenge that it provides me uh, with, even 35 years into my career. <laughs> uh, and the marvel of the, uh, just the wondrous reaction you get from people who eat it. When you, when you can make good risotto, you should make good risotto because it's, it's definitely a way to make people feel really good. And if you're coming, they're coming to your restaurant and you can make good risotto, they're probably not going to find it everywhere. So it's probably a good idea for you to, you know, make it for them. Um, I know here people are, people come here uh, for the risotto, you know, love that there's risotto available and are generally pretty happy with the risotto and um, it's a dish that they come here specifically for. So still stirring, stirring, stirring. Always everyone. stirring, yeah. Yeah. We're here with you. You're still now, stirring. I could walk away for 30 stirring. seconds, but you know, if I did, I'd say, Ann, watch that for me. Um, <laughs> or Andrew, watch that for me. Um, but you really, you really can't go too far. On the reheat, when you're 
making this in a restaurant, we would make a much larger batch. We would cool it down and then reheat it a little bit at a time. It's a little more forgiving. But at this point, you really have to stand here and watch. Okay, so now you see that the liquid went from totally covering the rice to now you're seeing all the little grains of rice in a very thick liquid. That means that some of it's evaporated, some of it's been absorbed. And this is what you're trying to do. Just get the, coax the rice to absorb the tasty liquid that you've prepared for it. Now, liquid could be a million things. You know, it could be squid ink, it could be pumpkin juice, could be coconut milk, it could be anything that you can dream of that is um, thin enough for and has enough water in it for risotto rice to absorb. And that's how you get all the different flavors of risotto, because all risotto starts out the same, arborio, white arborio rice. Now, I've also experimented with um, Japanese sushi rice. Works really well in risotto. And oh, this really? preparation, yeah, it takes about twice as long to cook, huh. but it comes out uh, really delicious. Yeah. Interesting. You've had perfectly cooked sushi rice. Yeah. It's an amazing texture, right? So I mean, it stands the reason that it would work in a cooked rice porridge kind of dish like this. And so, and so we're finishing with like the truffle flavors. Is, is there like a craziest ingredient you've ever added to risotto or? Uh, yeah, I mean, I've, I've made some crazy risottos that have white truffle and pigeon and crayfish and all at the same time, just to make it like super fancy. Yeah. Um, but I think truffle's a pretty extravagant ingredient and luckily it's not so hard to find anymore, at least in the form of butter. And uh, truffle butter is a perfect uh, for ingredient for this, this dish. You need to finish it with butter anyway, so if you have truffle butter, why not? So I just tasted the rice while we were talking, and it's still gritty. Uh, it hasn't begun to soften in the middle at all. So it just tells me we need, you know, another 15 minutes or so. Okay, so it's finished. At the beginning, you said uh, risotto takes about 20 minutes. I said maybe 40. I'm not sure. You know, we'll see as we, we get into it and cook it. And so you see, it just... It just depends on the Basically, time what and place. Basically, what saying is I did to him what I hate when people do to me. It's like, what's the time for this? It's like, how much time does it take? It, it takes however much time it takes. Right. Like, <laughs> it takes the time it's going to take. Get these pig's knuckles in the oven. So in the middle of cooking this dish with you all, Rocco's also still prepping for dinner service for the restaurant tonight. Yeah, we, we have a new menu item tonight. Uh, Crispy pig's knuckles. Yeah. Going on the beer garden menu. Yeah. Yeah. New menu item, I should say. I love it. All right, quick speed round. Someone on Instagram that you love to follow right now. Um, Jose Andreas is pretty fun yeah. to follow. Yeah. When he does his um, impromptu video video speeches, it's pretty great. Jose Andreas is great, yeah. Is there, uh, we talk about a dish you're obsessed with right now. Is there a song you're obsessed with right now or an yeah. entrance song if you have I one? think it's by Lady Gaga. I think it's called Bad Romance. Yeah. So it's like, Roma, Roma, yeah. ma, <laughs> ma, ma, Roma, ma. Yeah. I can't stop singing it. I don't know why. And last question. Do you have any superstitions in the kitchen? Do we have any superstitions, Ann? Not really, right? We smudge the kitchen every now and then. We do, yeah. We do smudge the kitchen with sage. Um, yeah. yeah, sort of, in, from my point of view, it's just why not? Why wouldn't you if you can? And I, but I think some of the cooks think it definitely gets rid of some of the spirits that are lingering. Awesome. All right, rice is starting to get soft. Probably not going to need to add much more liquid. So usually you know I keep track of time. I try and keep track of time during this episode, which this is probably the one I should have, but I didn't because as we're saying... Depending on your heat level, it may, this one may cook in 22 minutes and yours may cook in 27 minutes. Exactly. All right, I'm going to pull out the time, the stems of time. So we're pulling out the stems of the time. You could use a, a tongs or a, a culinary tweezers if you happen to have one at home. I do. I use it for bacon, quite frankly. So pull out those hard stems from the thyme. You do not want to eat those. But the, the little leaves from, from the sprigs have probably fallen off. Into yeah, your the, zone, leaves, which is the good. leaves have definitely fallen off at this point. Unless we really want to mess with people and say, pull out every little... Uh... <laughs> yeah, every, every leaf? Yeah. No, that would not be necessary. Yeah. All right. Stirring, stirring, stirring. Don't stop. So I'm also evaluating, trying to figure out, uh, are all the 
grains fully bloomed. Just some of them. I think, I think they're all kind of evenly bloomed. They're about three quarters of the way there. So I'm not gonna risk and add, add any more liquid. If I add more liquid, I lose control of the cook and uh, it'll overcook. Got it. So you're just so continuing at that light, light bubble. Yep, and since butter has water in it, um, I know that I'm gonna have to allow some capacity in the starch to absorb more, more liquid in the form of the water and the butter. Got butter it. is you know, 80% butter fat, the rest is water. Okay. Or milk solids. Or... So, so when you get to this point of you know, three quarters of the way through, keep an eye on it. This is the inflection point. This is a very important point where it could go sideways. This is the point that everyone is petrified of. Yeah. Well, a neighbor about, recently texted me while they were making risotto and they were at this point and didn't know what to do. And So how about final product? What are, are people, they're not necessarily looking for a mushy, soft grain, right? No, you're looking for a, a tender yet responsive grain. Um, not al dente. One that, yeah, sort of al dente. Okay. Yeah. A little more tender than al dente, but it's got to be responsive, meaning that it kind of punches back a little. It's, it's um, if you squeeze it, it's, it's, squeezes back. Yeah, yeah. You want to feel it. You don't want it to just disappear into your mouth. It's got to be something you can chew. All right. So now you, uh, you can probably see that, remember I showed you the rice and it had a very large opaque center and a translucent exterior. It still has a little bit of that, but much less. And the grains of rice are now swollen yeah. and the color of uh, the white color of the rice is more even throughout the entire grain of rice. So it's kind of like when you're st when you think of it like when you're stirring, it's kind of all like slowly flowing back. I don't want to say wet sand. That's not a good. It is a lot yeah. like wet okay. sand. You're right. You yeah, yeah. It's like when you're digging for sand crabs. Yeah. You know, and you're pulling the sand out, and the water finally comes in, and it keeps remixing. Yeah. Yeah. And sort of recalibrating. That's what happens when you cook risotto. That's exactly right. So I can leave this like this for a while. And it probably won't overcook too much because it only overcooks if I give it more water. Yeah, it's not about heat in this case, it's about how much water. All right, so it's not fully done. I'm gonna start adding butter and truffles to finish it. If we need more stock, I always have the stock and you can always add it later. So you're kind of pulling a little bit from the heat, but yep. make sure you know, you're not going over full heat there. So I'm gonna add some um, tuber Milano swarm. These are winter truffles. These are the black winter truffles that everyone has heard about. Uh, because it's summer, these are frozen, but I think you can already smell that they have a tremendous amount of flavor in them. And these as you know, these about say $600 a, a kilo. Wow. Just add that right to the pan. Uh, what do you got there, half a cup? Uh, that was, I would say, uh, a heaping tablespoon. Heaping, heaping tablespoon. Heaping tablespoon of chopped truffles. Okay. Give it a nice stir. Yeah. And now you can see that the liquid is basically dry so that when I'm scraping the bottom of the pan, I'm seeing stainless steel and I'm seeing it for a while. That means that all the liquid I have added to the pan is absorbed by the rice. Yeah, it's not a mass. Right, it's not a wet, it's not wet anymore. It's sort of like, uh, just like the sand that you described. Mm, okay, tastes good. Wow. That little bit of truffle added so much flavor. You keep giving it a stir. You don't have to listen to me until I tell you Rocco stirring. This should be like a, you know, if you're taking a 10, 20, 30 second break, okay, but nothing more than that. Like this is a, that's why Rocco says it's a labor of love. Keep, keep giving it that stir, working it around. And when you stir it, I think as he mentioned, you're drawing out the, the starch uh, from the rice. No cream in this. That creaminess comes from the starch and you mix it. You, can you see how the rice has changed? It's now large, plump yeah. grains of rice, but they're not broken. Yeah. It's really important you don't break the rice when you're cooking it. They have to be fully cooked, tender, uh, enveloped with a thick, creamy, delicious sauce, but not broken. Is there such thing as overworking it, like yes. over stirring it? Yes. yes, you can. So at this point, if I were going to stir it, you know, if I used a whisk or a heavy metal spoon, I could, I could break it and you'll end up with something that looks like... Um, uh, a breakfast cereal like farina, yeah. <laughs> which you don't want, right? right? This rice is expensive, it's really carefully grown, it's carefully picked and handled. It's designed to be cooked carefully so that you can see the whole grains of rice and feel them in your mouth. All right, so we're gonna finish it with um, 
a little Parmigiano Reggiano. This is going to say call. a heaping tablespoon and a half. Parmigiano Reggiano uh, is one thing. There is only one thing called Parmigiano Reggiano. You have to use the stuff that's called Parmigiano Reggiano <laughs> from Italy, dr- aged for at least one year. Cannot be anything else. If it comes from another country, it's not the right cheese. So when I get that question all the time, what other cheese can I use? There is no substitute. You have to use this cheese. There you go, folks. Yeah. Hit pause. No, don't hit pause. Now, it's expensive, I understand. But you only have to use very it. little of it. You only, I used about an ounce right there. So you can see how it became a little thicker. Oh my gosh, this looks yep. so good. You're smelling that now? You should be smelling all those ingredients you added. The onion, the garlic, the oh, wine, the truffle. Yeah, you're really coming along well. Test, oh, you're definitely going to taste them. I'm going to add... Um, two tablespoons of fresh truffle butter. Let's stir that in. And it's really rich. I can tell it's rich from how it looks. So I'm gonna add a little more white wine and a little more chicken stock. So you could tell it's rich. Yeah, just from looking at it. Look, yeah. see how, you can see how it's almost gonna break. Yeah. Yeah. Put your finger in there, taste it. You wash your finger at some point, right? I always do. Yeah. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Good reaction. <laughs> Good reaction. <laughs> oh, that is out of control. Now, when risotto rice is perfect, it's loose. It's not stiff. Uh, when it hits the plate, it should flow and cover the bottom of the plate. So if you see people plating risotto rice and it's piling up in the plate, that means it's either too um, dry, there's enough, enough liquid in it, or it's overcooked. So if someone can't get their hands on like these truffles, which obviously you could order things you know online. If you and go can't, to just use the butter. Just use, okay. If not, Parmesan and Parmesan Reggiano and whole butter yeah. is an amazing flavor. Yeah. You, who who doesn't love pasta with butter and parm? Yeah, everyone loves that, right? It's Absolutely. such a great flavor combination. All right, this is so close to being ready. Very exciting moment when you're cooking risotto, and add a little white wine. A little white wine because, one, it's a little too thick, and two, it needs acidity. And a little stock. A little splash of white wine, a little splash of stock. And stir. When this comes to a boil, it should be pretty close to perfect. Now, the, the splash of white wine and the splash of stock you did at the end, is that um, only as necessary? Or do yes, you all, very you much as necessary. Yep. Necessary Those are the, you know, the white wine and the stock and water, to be completely honest, are the tools that you have to address flavor, seasoning, a viscosity, intensity. Sometimes you use too much of a highly flavored chicken stock and it tastes too chickeny, so you need white wine to be a foil to the chicken stock or water. You know, water would be something you could add at, at this point if it was too rich. Mm. It's a little rich, actually. I'm, I'm, I might add some water. Yeah? Yeah. I'm not adding any more salt. There was enough salt in the parm. Uh, need some chopped herbs. So I have those. Yeah. So um, when it's done, and, and not any sooner than that, you want to add chopped herbs. This is a mixture. It's called Fien Herb. It's a classical um, mixture of herbs that is mostly flat parsley, about 15% tarragon, about 20% chives, and about 20% chervil. Got it. All right. And this is the end, so end, end. Here we're seeing something interesting. There are a couple of little volcanoes or a little, what look like um, uh, when you bake a pie and the steam comes out of a little hole in the crust, a couple of little areas where steam is escaping and you see a little bit of fat around it. That means that means that area is a little bit uh, high in the fat and it's breaking. Mm. So I'm gonna reassemble, I'm gonna re-emulsify uh, that fat by stirring and adding a little stock. Got it. So this is basically an emulsification, huh. right? This is as much an emulsification as mayonnaise is, as hollandaise is. Yeah. And again, creamy, super creamy, right? And it didn't add cream. But would you describe that as incredibly yeah. creamy? Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Just a little more stock. Stir, stir, stir. So this is, you know, this is this is the best guide you're going to get to risotto. Again, it's not precision, 
and you're doing this to adjust the richness, the exactly the final product. I'm reacting so. to the flavor, to the look, the texture, the mouth feel. Um, I feel like it could use a little more liquid, number one, to dilute some of the richness of the flavor, and two, to finish cooking the interior so that it's a little bit more tender. And, and it comes down to personal preference. There are a lot of chefs who would have taken this off before yeah. and, and uh, allowed you to eat it while the rice was still crunchy. Some people believe that's, a, that's what res good risotto is. It's undercooked rice. I feel a little differently about it. And you get to make it however you want when you make it. So Rocco's shaking So how long have we been cooking right now? Uh, 40, 40 okay. minutes about. So yeah. that's how long it takes to make this risotto. It takes 40-something 40, 40 minutes from start okay. to finish if you have everything ready awesome. to go. And, and, and so I paint the picture as Rocco's shaking the pan and, and stirring, the risotto is like free-flowing. And as he said, as you dump this into a shallow bowl or a plate, it should kind of flow out. Um, onto the plate. This isn't very like, loose. He's shaking the pan. It's it's loose. It's not a hunk that's sitting there. And when it comes time to plate, you can see the rice is very, again, very loose. It will it will seize up quickly. Uh, the minute it hits the plate, it's going to cool down. The minute it gets into the air of the dining room, it's going to cool down and become one solid mass. So you're fighting against all those elements when you're making risotto. I'm going to top it with some uh, fresh tuber estevam. This is a summer truffle. Estevam means summer. They are not as flavorful as the winter truffles, but they are what's in season now. And uh, they're actually pretty nice for tuber estevam. They're also much less expensive than winter truffle because they're low demand and high supply. Awesome. And there's that truffle shaver again that, that yeah. Rachel uses too in one of her episodes, which you could get oh, right Oh, she does too? Oh, yeah. great. Good. She uses it for garlic. Oh, good. Yeah, it's great for sliced garlic. Really good. So hanging on to the end of summer here, going into fall, is there an ingredient that you don't quite like to let go of? Yes, there's an ingredient I, I, I cry about every summer. It's fresh tomatoes. Yeah. I wait all year for them. They come. I use them in every dish possible. <laughs> uh, I'm criticized by how many dishes tomatoes are in. Uh, and then, you know, come September, October, it's very, it's a tough goodbye. Wait, so it really is. So if you have one of those delicious tomatoes at home... Yes. Like, what are you doing with it? So if they're really delicious, peak of season, you need to do very little to them. Salt, olive oil, and you're probably going to have a great dish. Um, adding cheese like mozzarella di buffalo, um, adding basil, that's, you know, that's how you can start to elaborate a, a tomato dish. Tomato with shaved fresh corn is great. Um, to, you know, cook tomatoes with steaks and fish is great. All right, guys, time to taste. Amazing. All right, we're digging in here. Oh, right? wow. You guys going to taste? I'll take a yeah. Come on. You may not have a whole... Rob, you haven't had my risotto in a long time. You may not have a whole crew around you, but uh, taste that risotto. That is delicious. I love that. Oh, I just got a good bite of tarragon from those uh, herbs. Thanks, man. I appreciate this. <laughs> now everyone knows how to make perfect risotto. Taste, adjust. Mix, I wouldn't say it's shape. perfect, but it's good. Yeah. Very good. Perfect risotto is the holy grail, right? That we're always chasing after. Right? Cool. Thank you, man. That was fun. Thank you very much. Uh, really appreciate yeah. it. Whether you just listened for fun or you cooked right along with us, we want to thank you. If you did cook a recipe, we want to see your food. Take a pic and tag it with hashtag CookTracks. You can find more info and keep up to date with us at CookTracks.com. Cook Tracks is cooked up by Cappy, Ian Cohen, and Charlie Dugiello, with editing from Joel Yeaton. Music has been composed by Jeffrey David Goldford. Special thanks to Red Summit Productions. Please rate, review, and or subscribe to this podcast on your listening site of choice. Thanks for listening to Cook Tracks. We got your back in the kitchen. <laughs>